Welcome to the Amish Methodist Circuit YouTube channel and to this circuit service of prayer and reflection for Sunday the 6th of March. I am Josephine Pryor, a local preacher of the Amersham Circuit of the Methodist Church. We begin our worship this morning with a hymn, number 712 in hymns and psalms. God of grace and God of glory. Now we turn to our prayers of adoration and confession. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank and praise you for all your creation and for our place within it. Thank you for wind and rain, thunder and lightning, the approach of spring, budding leaves, early insects and flowers and the knowledge that by your word all things hold together. Christ Jesus, we thank you for your once and for all sacrifice in which you lay down your life for us and then took it up again in resurrection, assuring us all of life everlasting. Holy Spirit, we praise and adore you for your quiet presence within each one of us, every day of our lives. With all the saints, we thank you. Amen. But Lord, we struggle to maintain your perfect likeness which is imprinted on us. We damage it and alter it with the wrong that we do, either knowingly or unaware, alone, or in the company of others. Help us to recognise in those moments before we go astray that we need to stop and turn once again towards you. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear now the word of grace. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and to all of us who turn to him in sorrow and in faith, he says that our sins are forgiven. Amen, and thanks be to God. Now let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our second hymn is number 196 from Hymns and Psalms. I know that my Redeemer lives. prayer for our offering and its dedication. Dear Lord, although we are not meeting face to face for worship today, we are still making our regular gifts of money, time and effort for the work of God in the church. We ask therefore that God should bless all these gifts and indeed our whole lives to his service and to his glory. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now Colin Palsland is going to read to us from Scripture. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 26 verses 1 to 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God shall choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response 
before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labour on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground to you, O Lord. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Amen. The second reading is from Romans, chapter 10, verses 8b to 13. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Our third hymn is number 136 from Hymns and Psalms. I heard the voice of Jesus say,
theme of our service is God's faithfulness towards us. Our first reading from the book of Deuteronomy is traditionally attributed to Moses, although it seems likely to have been written by somebody else soon after his death in 1270 BC, or in the few generations that followed. Today's passage describes the ceremony of thanksgiving, which was to be established when the Israelites settled in the promised land. The people were to consecrate the first fruits of their harvest in what would later become the Festival of Weeks. The festival was to serve as an annual reminder to them, and now us, of God's faithfulness to them throughout their history. From Jacob, called Israel, father of the nation, through their long stay in Egypt, where their numbers multiplied and they were later enslaved, to their dramatic escape under Moses' leadership, through the decades of wandering in the desert, to their ultimate reclamation of the promised land. Some scholars believe that the book of Deuteronomy may have been written as late as 621 BC, after King Josiah discovered the books of the law in the Jerusalem temple, where they had lain forgotten during the previous reigns of a whole string of idolatrous and ungodly kings. But whenever it was written, a key feature is the spiritual, uncontained holiness of God. The little gods of Israel's neighbours were all material, they could be represented by moulded figurines of stone, wood, carved bone, bronze or even gold and housed in physical dwellings. The God of Israel was never to be represented in any material, nor was God to be contained. Instead, the sacrifice of first fruits was to be brought to the place that the Lord God would choose as a dwelling for God's name. In Moses' time, this was the tabernacle or tent of meeting, which the Israelites carried with them during their desert wanderings. Later, this became the Jerusalem temple built by King Solomon during his reign in around 930 BC, where the tent or temple the place was a dwelling only for God's name. Our reading from the letter of Paul to the church in Rome was written while he was staying in the Greek city of Corinth at the end of his third missionary journey in around AD 57. In some ways, the letter can be thought of as Paul's gospel, that is, the good news of God's saving grace delivered once and for all through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. The letter was written for a congregation of mixed Jewish and Gentile Christians. The passage we have heard today was written to assure his listeners of God's faithfulness and saving grace available to all who believe. When he says, the word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, Paul is quoting Deuteronomy chapter 30 and Psalm 107, telling the Israelites that the word of God is near to them, explaining that they need to go neither up into heaven nor down into the deep to search for it. Instead, it is in their heart and in their mouth for them to observe. For the early Israelites, this meant following the law of Moses, written in the Ten Commandments. Instead, for the first century Christians of both Jewish and Gentile background, the law had already been fulfilled in Christ's death and resurrection. It was now important to reinterpret the idea of the word near you, on your lips and in your heart, to mean faith in God's salvation through the gift of grace. 
although, although all these words were written a long time ago, we can see how they have remained true down the centuries to this day for all the people of God, wherever they may find themselves, especially where people suffer injustice and oppression, sometimes from their own leadership, as in the civil war in Syria, sometimes from foreign powers. Again, think of the Russian intervention targeting civilians in Syria, and now in the recent Russian invasion of Ukraine. I'm now going to read you a poem written by Michael Rosen and published in his 2020 anthology of poems about migration, which speaks to us of what's going on in Ukraine now and Syria. It's called On the Move. And the poem is called Never Again. We say never again, but when people with power are pointing in one direction, when many minds are pointing in that direction, when guns and bombs are pointing in that direction too, it can happen again. It can happen again. It does happen again. It has happened again. It can be furious and chaotic. It can be calm and orderly. It can start with laws. It can start without them. The people who do it can believe they are saving their country. The people who do it can believe they are just getting their own back. That's why it can happen again. It does happen again. It has happened again. Hope lies still as it always has, wherever Christian people have the word near them, on their lips and in their heart, which is faith in God's salvation through the gift of grace. Just a few days ago on the television news, we saw pictures of German families lining up at the Berlin railway station to welcome and take home with them Ukrainian families fleeing the Russian invasion of their homes and cities. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our fourth hymn, is number 358 in hymns and psalms. O oh God, our help in ages past.
We turn now to our prayers of intercession. And we'll begin with a prayer for Ukraine, published by the Northampton Methodist District on the 24th of February, 2022. God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the invasion of Ukraine by the Russian military. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. We mourn every casualty of this conflict, every precious life extinguished by war. We pray comfort for those who grieve and those who are fearful. Hear our longing that leaders and nations will honour the worth of all people by having the courage to resolve conflict through dialogue. May all our human failings be transformed through your wonderful grace and goodness. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the author of peace and sustainer of creation. Amen. And now we turn to other prayers of intercession. And when I say the Lord hears our prayers, I invite you to respond, thanks be to God. The Lord hears our prayer, thanks be to God. Lord, we pray for peace throughout the world. We pray that leaders use their influence to be instruments of harmony, showing love and respect for all. We pray in particular for people with disabilities and their families caught in conflict, who may struggle to move to a place of safety and be excluded from humanitarian response initiatives. Lord, we ask for your protection for them, for comfort at these times of distress, and we pray that their needs are recognised, addressed and not forgotten. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We also pray for the environment. The bombs, fire and destruction of war threaten to lay waste the environment as well as innocent people and their property. May the best decisions be made to keep protecting the environment and especially those parts of the world at greatest risk of harm from global warming. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We pray for those who are otherwise anxious, uncertain and unwell, especially for patients, health and care workers in hospitals, care homes and the community. As formal restrictions are lifted, help us to remain aware that the scourge of COVID-19 has not ended. The UK death rate from COVID is still stubbornly high at around 160 people per day. And to date, about 162,000 people have already died in the UK. May we be reminded that vaccines, mask wearing, social distancing, hand washing and fresh air all continue to be important defences against contracting and spreading this horrible disease. Lord, help all of us to be patient, kind and generous with each other in these difficult times. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final hymn is number 63 in hymns and psalms. All my hope on God is founded.
And now our final prayer and benediction. Let us pray. Lord, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us and on all who need your grace and your love today. Grant to us and the authorities wisdom, good sense and courage to do God's will as we continue to face the challenges of COVID-19 and the manifest unfairness of the world together. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God. And may the blessing of God, who we know as Father and Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all and with those whom we love, now and forevermore. Amen.